Hey guys, what's going on? Adam from Adam Olson Fitness here with Amy Hi. Back at Amy Back Fit. We are here at Adam Olson Fitness and welcome back to the channel. Cool. Uh, there's Akuma. He's oh, here strolling around, good. just chilling. So today's video, we wanted to discuss basically some terminologies. Uh, we wanted to go over set variations, some terms that you may hear about certain types of sets. Um, we're going to cover what a drop set is, what a superset is, what a tri set is, and what a giant set is. Um, so if you're new to the gym or the gym terminology, and you're not sure what's what, these are. this is going to be a prime example as to what those things are. Um, we've got our esteemed colleague here keeping the dumbbells warm. Right, Akuma? <laughs> Amy's going to demonstrate while I explain what these set types are. And um, hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight into what you're doing and when you're doing it in the gym if someone uses these terms. So we're going to start with the drop set. Um, sometimes people will call this a strip set as well. He's going wild. Um, so <laughs> we're going to have Amy get back here. She's going to grab two dumbbells. Now when you do a drop set, it is what it sounds like. You are dropping the weight. So usually you would start, this would be after your warm up sets and you're going to do your heaviest set and everything's primed and ready to go. And then you're going to do what may be referred to also as an extended set. So as, the, as you start to fail and you have muscular fatigue at, with a certain uh, weight that you're using for a certain rep range, or you're just going until you fail with that weight, <laughs> you're gonna pick up the next weight down and you're going to continue on with your drop set or your strip set. Um, and Again, it's also might be referred to as an extended set. So Amy's going to pick up these weights. She's just going to give us about eight to 10 reps with good form. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, whatever you can do here oh, man. and just, just do some reps. So she's going, keeping the, the form nice and controlled. When the muscles start to fail or she starts to reach muscular fatigue with this weight or the form starts to break, she may start to try to squeeze as much out of this as she can. She might get some partial reps, just demonstrate some partials. So the muscles are tired now. She can only do what she can do. You don't want to compromise your form. You want to basically just do what the muscles would do as they start to fail. She can't lift the weights anymore. She goes wants to extend the set, so she does a drop set. Right away. Right away, picks up the next weights down and continues to work Finishes out. through that exercise. Now you can do as many as you want basically until the weight is almost nothing or your arms can't lift anything else at all. You can also work in percentages. Some people really like to use 20%. So um, as like kind of a staple. So if you're working with 20 pounds, you might want to drop about 20% or four pounds. If you don't have a fractional plate to do that with, then you would just drop to the next increment closest, which would be five pounds down. So you go from 20 to 15, you could do another 20% and keep going if you want to failure. So that would be an example of a drop set. The next very common uh, terminology used is a superset. And a superset, a tri set, and a giant set basically are how many sets you're doing with certain exercises. So if you're going to do a superset, you're usually doing two sets or a set of one movement and then a set of another movement. And you can do that with the same muscle group or you can do that with a competing muscle group, meaning that you can do a superset for two exercises with biceps, for example. You can do a bicep curl right into a bicep hammer curl. That would be a superset for biceps. Or you can do a competing superset where you're doing a bicep curl and maybe a tricep overhead extension. Those two muscles are antagonistic to each other and are competing with one another. Or not, I'm sorry, they're non-competing. So this would be a non-competing muscle to your tricep. So you can do Again, bicep and then hammer, same muscle. Or a non-competing muscle group, which would be bicep and tricep, one set right into one set. So we're going to demonstrate those real quick. Amy's going to grab some weights. She'll just do a few reps of her regular bicep curls. You know, everything's good. Forms locked down. Shoulders are back. Elbows are tight. There's no rocking, swaying. None of that type of stuff is happening in her form. And then... As soon as That's she's done, done her number of reps, she switches right into her hammer curl. This would be set two of a um, bicep superset. So you would have bicep curl right into bicep hammer curl. You could take a period of rest in between, and then you can go right into um, your second set of superset. 
or we can do a non-competing muscle group superset where she's doing, again, her bicep curls. We'll do like three more. One, two, three, and then she can go right into a tricep movement, non-competing muscle group. Muscles are antagonistic to each other, so she's going right into her tricep over his head extension, and this would be an example of a superset. The next on the list would be a tricep, which is just like what it sounds. It is three movements coupled together. Again, you can do all three movements on the same muscle group, or you can do non-competing um, movements with non-competing or antagonistic muscle groups. You could also mix that up over three different movements. Let's say you wanted to do a shoulder, a bicep, and a tricep. And she'll, let's say we'll start with lateral raises. She'll do a few reps of lateral raises. This would be the first of the tricep of non-competing muscle groups, right into, let's say, hammer curls. We're touching part of the biceps, the biceps brachioradialis here. And then let's say she wants to go right into a tricep overhead extension. Then she would go right into that for however many reps she's doing. That is three movements, non-competing muscle groups, and that would be a tri-set, meaning there is three sets, each individualized. Now, if she wanted to make this a little bit more difficult for one particular muscle group, like she's really just trying to focus on development of one area, we could say we're going to do um, a shoulder press, dumbbell shoulder press. And she'll do a couple reps right here. And then she could say, I'm going to superset this, and you'll do a dumbbell lateral raise. This is the second set of the tricep. And then let's say we'll do a bent over rear, rear delt raise, hitting the rear delt to the shoulder. We're working basically shoulder components here, all the same muscle groups for three movements, makes up your tricep. And then the last one is basically four sets or more, and that would be a giant set. So we're going to give a quick example of that. And um, basically, again, you can do competing or non-competing movements and go right from there. So four movements on, let's say, biceps. We'll do a bicep curl for three reps. One, two, three. And let's say we're going to do a hammer curl for three reps. One, two, Three. Now let's say we're going to do a Zotman curl for three reps. So oh. palms are up and one, down, two, down, and three, and down. And let's say she'll sit on the edge of the bench right here and do a concentration curl on each arm for three reps. This would be a giant set. Four movements, all on the same muscle group, um, to completion. You can rest and repeat that same series again. Now, if we're going to do non-competing, again, you can go down a series of movements, four or more. So we're going to just demonstrate with the movements we've been doing oh. right now. So let's say we're going to do, um, let's say we'll do a shoulder press to start, and we go one, two, three, and now a bicep curl. We'll go one, two, three. Let's do an overhead extension with whatever weight. And one, two, three. And we'll do a fourth set. Um, we can go back and touch another shoulder if we like. We can do a lateral raise. This would be an example of a giant set. Now you can touch everything. You can go chest, back, shoulders, biceps, tries. That's five movements. That could be a five set giant set. And that's one whole set. And then you would take a rest and repeat that same series again. So these are examples of drop sets, supersets tri-sets and giant sets. So if you're working with someone and say, oh, we're going to do a superset and they're doing, you know, three, four movements, it's not really a superset. Like they can consider it that, but it's really a giant set. So if you want to get into the technicality of using terminologies correctly, or if you're working with a trainer or someone that's more advanced and they start using drop set, strip set, you know, extended set, tri-set, whatever, and they say, we're going to do a, you know, bicep, tricep, giant set, you know, you might have four or five movements in there that are hitting just those two muscle groups. Um, or you can do a bunch of different supersets. You can do bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep for three, three sets of supersetting, and then do another superset with those same muscle groups, um, just different exercises. So you can structure these any types of ways. I do want to preface that when you're doing um, certain movements like this, 
a lot of this stuff is really geared towards muscular endurance. Um, so because you're doing these long extended sets, you're working very specific energy systems and you're working for a certain type of specificity when it comes to muscular development. If you're working specifically for like focusing on strength gain, um, this would probably be secondary or tertiary to what you're really focusing on. Strength gain, you would really want to focus on big compound movements. You would want to focus on uh, doing smaller rep ranges, higher weights with longer rest times in between. So this isn't ideal for just maximizing strength if that's your goal, but this is helpful for- Yeah, you're you going to fatigue faster. Yeah, you're going to definitely sets. fatigue faster. If you're pressed for time, if you, you know, really want to get through Go. stuff, if you're trying to get a lot of uh, volumization or blood flow into muscles, even if you want to just warm up this way, you can definitely do that. Yeah, it's we try to do this that. with a lot of our 30 minute clients because it gets them, gets them in, gets them out, touches right. a lot of stuff. They're, they're just moving. 30 minute clients are moving quick. Yeah. So even if you want to do some type of like warm up as a superset, you could do uh, a leg extension right into like, you know, a light goblet squat or even start to do your light warm up sets for barbell squatting just to really get your legs like primed. And then you could just start doing more strength geared or hypertrophy geared stuff, depending upon how you're training. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys like this video and you want to share it, please like, share, subscribe, um, get this information out to anyone that's interested in this type of stuff. Um, also, it helps with the YouTube algorithm to push this information out to more people. So thank you for watching and subscribing Plus, if you subscribed. This one. And say hi to Akuma. He has his own Instagram. It's Akuma Bully. If you want to check him out <laughs> yeah. on Instagram, he's a rock star. Yeah. Um, so thank you again for, for watching. If you want to reach out to me, you can leave a comment right below in the, in the comment section. Or you can reach me at Adam Olson Fitness on Instagram or Facebook. You can reach Amy at Amy Back Fit on Instagram or Facebook. And again, thank you for watching the video, and we'll see you again here soon. Bye.